Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel and the Scouting for United series. The series where we take a look at a load of different players from around the world and discuss their strengths, their weaknesses and whether or not they would be a good signing for Manchester United. And as you can see on screen here today, we are talking about Sporting Lisbon defender Usman Diamond. Now, I'm not sure if it's Diamond or Diamonde. If you could uh, let me know in the comments down below, that would be greatly appreciated. I have heard commentators say Diamond, so that is what I will go with for today's video. But I'm sure you guys know by now my pronunciation isn't the best. So, yeah. Anyway, Usman Diamond, 19 year old uh, from Ivory Coast, currently playing for Sporting. However, he is quite new there. And if he was to have any sort of move this summer, it would be following a quick move in January. You see, last season he was playing for Midgetland and then went on loan to Mafra. He done so well there that um, Midgetland called him back and then sold him to Sporting. He done so well, so they quickly kind of had a quick turnover to get him gone because Sporting were really desperate for his signature. So that's how much he was impressing. However, I think what we can tell just by looking at this is that this is a very, very short career so far. Very, very short. This is a very young player. I mean, 19 years old. This isn't someone who's been kicking about in Europe for a long time. This is a young, upcoming talent. So a lot of you guys may not know his strengths and weaknesses. So that's what we're discussing today. So I just quickly wanted to take a break away from the main camera to talk to you guys about today's video sponsor, the Football Shirt Club. And the reason I want to talk about them is because today they have sent me this beautiful mystery box for me to try out for myself. You can see this lovely purple packaging, really, really good quality. So today we're going to open it up and we're going to see what we get inside. So we've turned the camera. Let's see what we are going to get inside. If you want to check them out, the link will be in the description down below to get one for yourself. But drum roll, please. Let's have a look at what we're going to get. Oh, it's very, very nice indeed. I'm seeing a PSV badge straight away, but also a couple of bonus gifts. We have a little information card. You guys can pause it if you want to read through that. I'll be reading through it later. We've also got some playing cards. Marcus Rashford feels very, very fitting for the channel. Got some different playing cards there though. Really high quality. They feel very nice. But then the most important thing, the piece à la resistance, the PSV shirt, the 21-22 away kit. I need to try this on and show you guys. So I have to say I'm really, really pleased with it. The PSV badge on the kit is very, very nice indeed. If you want to get your own mystery box, check out the Football Shirt Club using the link in the description down below. And also, if you use code AJ10 at checkout, you will get yourself a nice little discount. So first things first, Diamond is a right-footed, right-sided centre-back, and that is the position he likes to play. Currently for sporting at times, that will be on the right-hand side of a back three, sometimes in the middle of the back three, and has also been the odd occasion where he has played on the left-hand side of the defence. However, in my opinion, he is very much a right-sided defender. In terms of the way he likes to defend, he uses his big physical size he may only be 19 years old but he's already very much an athlete very very physical but importantly he isn't just physical and aggressive he's also very intelligent as well he combines kind of physique power strength speed with his intelligence which makes him an all-round very very decent defender and he's kind of got a lovely foundation to really improve in the future and become a top class player in terms of the way that he likes to defend Often playing in a back three at Sporting means he's able to be very aggressive, very front-footed, looking to get physical with the opposition striker or dropping forwards, moving into these higher positions to try and nick the ball back for his side. However, he is also capable of going the other way as well because he does have very, very good speed. Now, not only does he have good speed, he also has good balance. So when players are turning, he's able to maintain his speed to turn with the opposition player, whilst also having a good ability to kind of change his stride pattern to match that of the forward which makes him very good at one versus one situations like i said already on top of this he is defensively versatile he can play on the right side of a back three uh, in a system which would look something like that for example he can also play in the middle of a back three like this or like i said on occasion on the left side of a back three or potentially a back four as the right side of center back now if he was to play for manchester united this is the position that he would be expected to play so in terms of signing him at the moment, I wouldn't be doing it right now. I would leave him another year to develop to see if he can play, for example, in a back four because we haven't really seen too much evidence of it at the moment. And defending in a back three compared to a back four is very, very different in terms of the tasks you are given. However, one thing which Diamond does have as a benefit of playing in a back three is the ability to defend out wide. So for example, if he was to join United and, you know, there's discussions of United's build-up structure potentially looking something like this, for example, and if he was to ask to play this sort of role 
and defending out wide, he is used to doing that because this is very much the position he is used to playing in. So when the opposition are moving out wide like this, he's good at going across and trying to deal with it, using his physique, getting his body in the way. But like I said again, it is also largely about intelligence. This isn't just a big, powerful young player coming through. This is also a very intelligent young defender. Now, in terms of the areas that he needs to improve, it's kind of the same old, same old for a young defender. He does need to improve in just in general defense. He is still a little bit raw at times. He's a little bit too keen to make the tackle, and that does see him commit fouls. At times, he will dive into a one versus one situation and get beaten a little bit too easily. But again, we've got to remember, this is a 19-year-old. As we've already seen, he is still really very, very early on in his career, so we expect him to be raw in this way. But these are things which he will need to iron out if he wants a big move in the future. He also needs to improve in the air as well. Despite being a very, very big presence, he isn't actually the most aerially dominant player. Now, that might sound a little bit odd because he actually offers a goal threat, for example at set pieces, where he seems to be good in the air. But in terms of dealing with a long ball up towards him and competing with a striker, he does need to improve in that department. And again, if he was to join Manchester United specifically, that is an area where he would need work. We know that Sandro Martinez isn't the greatest player in the air, he isn't the biggest aerial presence. So for anyone to play alongside him in a centre-back pairing, they do need to have that aerial ability. Diamon doesn't offer that quite at this moment in time. So from a defensive point of view, we've got a player who's got really good foundations here, looks really very promising, but I think he still needs another year of development before any big move. Now whilst his defensive side of the game still has flaws which need to be ironed out, a side of his game which is much better is what he does on the ball. And despite being very young, He's incredibly complete on the ball, I have to be honest with you. I mean, in terms of playing the ball out from the back and receiving play, he's borderline press-resistant as a centre-back. Now, again, we're not talking like John Stones or Yuri and Timber level of press-resistance, because he's still very young, very raw player. However, he is really good at receiving the ball in these areas and trying to progress the play. For example, if the opposition striker looks, looks to put pressure on him, he's still comfortable receiving the ball, he doesn't panic in these situations, which is really important for such a young player. But also, in terms of technique, he loves a little body feint. He'll drop a shoulder which just shifts this player here, as Diamonde kind of drops his shoulder that way, it baits the striker that way, and then he's able to step forward. Now, it's only a really subtle movement, which in-game looks quite insignificant, but it's actually extremely important in terms of playing out from the back. And this is something which Diamond does really, really effectively. And this allows him to play out from the back really well. He's also really good with his passing, as we can see in his FBRF report here. We can see that these passing numbers are really impressive. We don't need to go into the individual stats. What we can see, though, is that we are getting dense green bars everywhere. Short passing, long passing, and medium range passing. But also towards the bottom there, the 98th percentile for progressive passes. So not only is he going to help his team play out from pressure with, you know, these body feints to draw the opposition in and beat a man, but also short passing into these areas to play out from the back, but also genuinely progressive passes. So when United are further up the pitch, for example, he would bring a real ability to kind of help the team break the opposition down. We know that a lot of teams like to get men behind the ball and be compact and difficult to break down. Diamond is really effective in these situations because his forward passing is genuinely top notch. Now we do have to consider he's playing for Sporting in Portugal, one of the best teams in the league and a league which doesn't have the greatest level, it's not the greatest standard. However, he is still really good at progressing the ball forward with his passing. Uh, in terms of long passing, I'd like to see it a little bit more. We saw in his FB ref report there, he is good at it in terms of the pass completion rate with his long passing. He's in the 89th percentile, but long passes attempted, he's only in the 63rd percentile. So that is the sort of thing I would like to see a little bit more in his career, particularly at Sporting. He has the opportunity to do that with long switched passes from this right centre back position to the left wing back. That is something that I would like to see him doing a little bit more. But in general, he's really good with his passing. On top of that, he's also good at carrying the ball forward as well. And again, he does use those body feints. And... This, again, is where I feel like he has composure ahead of his years. A lot of players in this situation, when they're pressed, will play it simple. They'll just go inside to the other centre-back, or maybe inside to a midfield. Diamond is the sort of player who really waits till the last second to release the ball. So he's kind of drawing the pressure onto him. Now, the benefit of this, for example, if he just plays this ball into Dallo here, for example... This player can easily press him and so can this player. However, if he holds on to the ball, you draw this player out. If you then drop a body feint like Diamond loves to do, doing that body feint then go any other way. He done this really well a few times against Arsenal in the Europa League last season. Dropping that shoulder, beating your man and then playing the ball, it gives this next player a bit more time. And he's really considerate with the way in which he gives the ball to his teammate. He wants to make sure that his teammate is in a good position to do so. 
and in order to do that, at times, he will take on extra responsibility himself. And again, this is reflected in his FBRF report. Take-ons attempted the 92nd percentile, successful take-ons the 95th percentile. Now the percentages need a little bit of work, but we can see what he's trying to do here. And then in terms of carries, total carrying distance, progressive carrying distance, and carries into the final third, he ranks in the 99th percentile for all four of those metrics, plus the 96th percentile for progressive carries. This is a very, very good young ball playing defender, and he would be an excellent weapon allowing United to progress the ball for the team. And this is why so many uh, people, particularly on Twitter, for example, want Diamon signed to Manchester United. However, for me, at this moment in time, he isn't ready just yet. On the ball, genuinely, I think he is. I think he is a top young ball playing defender, ready for the move in terms of a possession dominant side. I think it suits him. However, we know Manchester United is still in a transitional period under Eric Ten Hag. The team isn't fully set up, isn't fully complete. And there is still a lot of defensive work that is done at the club. Diamond, for me isn't there in that aspect of his game at the moment. I think he's a little bit raw still with some of his decisions, when he steps out, when he drops in, and also his aerial ability just isn't up to the standard which is needed, particularly alongside Lissandra Martinez. However, give him one more year at Sporting where he can develop in Portugal a really good developmental league I think there could be a top young defender here. I would say for now, those are kind of my final thoughts on Diamond at this moment in time. Like I've said already, his, the sample size isn't too big because his career has been very, very short so far. This is a very young player kind of breaking onto the European scene. So there isn't too much footage to watch, too many examples to give. However, from what I've seen, there is a really good foundation here for a top young defender. In terms of defensively off the ball, he's got a lot of the physical and powerful attributes which you would want, and his reading of the game is also pretty decent for his age. And then on the ball, he's genuinely phenomenal, really press resistant and a really good ball progressor, both with passing and carrying. In terms of areas to develop, just kind of polishing off some of the rough edges at the moment, really kind of getting better in certain areas, but also his aerial ability does need to improve. He needs to become a little bit more dominant. If he can do those things over the next 12 months or so, then he will get himself a move next summer, I'm pretty sure of it, and Manchester United should be on the hunt for this player, because this is a really good young defender who could be top, top class one day. But that's all I've got to say for today's video, so thank you guys for watching, I hope you have enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.